Welcome back on my saga of the Ice Bear Ghost scooters, 50cc. I don't the other one had these little eyebrow things on them. I think they might be one year different. This one has only a thousand miles on it. I already washed this one. When I was washing the other one, I decided I would just throw it out there. That's why it's still wet. Missing the uh, lock on here. From what I heard, this is an electrical issue. And from what I can see right now, this, this button doesn't do anything, the start button. So I'm guessing it has something to do with this and maybe more. Um, yeah, I think one of the batteries came back to 12 volts, but I don't know if it's actually going to have any cranking volts in it. This one is missing all the screws out of the floor. So I'm guessing this has been a part. Um, we'll do the same thing we did on the last one. And let's see if we can get this one going. So with this one... Um, I think I'm going to try to figure out how to take the dash off here because I I'm pretty sure there's a problem with this but I don't know how long these wires are because I've read where some of the replacement switches have short wires and will not reach to this side and if that's the case then that switch may not work for this unless I lengthen the wires myself um, I've also seen them where these two are reversed where run is over here and kill is over here so I don't know Anyway, let's start taking this off. this out and maybe we can take that apart and see if there's something in there that's repairable I really hope it's only these two screws I find it funny when uh, I talk about, well, maybe I'll replace the carburetor on the other one. I can get them for 20 something dollars and I get a comment like, why are you putting one of those $20 Chinese piece of junk carburetors on there for? Hello? <laughs> the whole bike's from China. I don't think the carburetor on it is any better than the one that uh, they sell now. So, let's see if I can get you over here. How's that? I just took that screw out. I'm taking this screw out. I 
everything's soldered here. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's just like replacing a switch. Is that uh, zip tied around something? There's another screw in there, isn't there? Underneath here. That's unfortunate. Yeah, let's, let's cut that zip tie. You probably noticed that I just jumped ahead a little bit in my video while I was looking for the uh, cutters that I just had in my hand and couldn't find. That's my great organizational skills. And it happens to you too, don't lie. Oh, this switch doesn't want to come out. All right, let's see what we got here. That's just a pin holding that in. It is. It's mushroomed over. So there's the spring, which I'm guessing is not supposed to be like that squished. How that happens, I don't know. So really, it need, probably just needs a spring in there. Contacts look okay. Hmm. I don't know if I'll be able to find one of them, but hey, you never know. What is that, a part number? What? Let me take a picture of that. Well, it's been a few days for me, but the new switch came in. We'll be uh, replacing that old one. And I got a new battery for the bike, so we'll see if this thing will run. Hopefully we don't have any carb issues or anything with this one. And this one's nice and quick, but we'll be putting that switch in next. So this switch uh, has the same connector, same wires on it. I was surprised I could actually find one that was exactly the same. Because there was so many out there that were a little different. I'll just take these screws off. I don't need, I think we need to change that, this part of the cap. Should just be this one. So of course we run into an issue because you have one red and one black wire here and you also have another black wire here but on the other bike you had a wire with a fuse in it and that went to positive. So I'm thinking that this might be a positive wire 
that somebody cut the fuse out of and put an eyelet on. So now to find out where that goes, I have to remove all this again on this bike and try to trace that wire. So I'll be taking this tub out, the body work out. Yeah, we'll find out where that wire goes and find out if that's positive or negative. All right, I got the whole tub off this thing. So if this is positive, which we assume it is because it's red, that runs up here to the starter solenoid. No other wire branches off of it. So that wire is isolated, meaning there has to be another power source, and I'm guessing this is it because this goes right into the harness. So I don't know if I have an inline fuse I can put in here um, and fix this up. I'm going to see what I got. And uh, I know there was electrical issues with this bike, but it only had a thousand miles on it. Uh, yeah, so hopefully nothing else fried. Because I don't know if somebody tried to hook that up to negative thinking that was negative either. All right, well, we know that's now positive. All right, so I did find an inline 20 amp fuse. I don't know what size fuse it's supposed to have, but it's going to get 20. Uh, it's even got a end on it that'll work. So I just have to splice this end into that end with a connector and we're good. So under that black sleeve, it was a red wire. So I just put a connector on it and another one on the other end. And these are insulating, so nothing should touch them. We'll do that. We'll put the body back on, I guess, and go from there. So while I got the cover off, I decided to check the valves on this one. Even though the last one, they were dead on. And this one, I got up on top dead center. Yeah, you just know, you can't feel any clack. There's a little bit of room, but I put my feeler gauge in there and nothing. I can't get the sizes in, so I guess I'll be adjusting these. All right, intake on top. Most obvious because our intake's right here. See if we can do this with a socket. Because I don't have a nine millimeter wrench out here. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I thought. It would tighten it too much. Good. Okay. Back on with the cover. I 
dipstick is showing no oil so I suppose we should check that out dump that and maybe fill it yeah there's not really much coming out of here is there we'll let that run a while I'm sure it's thick too there's a little crud on the screen, nothing bad though. So while as the oil was draining, I spared you the uh, time and waste of watching me put this dash back together. But throttle works. That's our new switch. So I'll put this drain plug back in, fill it with oil, put the body back on, hook up the battery, and we'll see what we get. All right, I went to hook up the battery and there was a short. So I traced it back to down here, which is the um, voltage regulator. So I unplugged that and the short is gone. Now we can turn the key on. take it for a ride. Seems to idle good. Straighten me out there. These mirrors are way off for me. Man, so much traffic. definitely seemed quicker than the other one with that car new carburetor. further investigation yeah this thing was burnt up um, I checked at the plug at the other end and there's a uh, the two stator wires are both going to ground so yeah it shorted out now I just have to order another one of these I think they're about $15 or so not bad so I'll get one of those on the way and we'll finish this thing up so there we have the old stator, which is kind of burnt up, and the new one. And we'll be putting that in next. It's a Loctite for our screws.
Okay. A little pickup here. We have to set a gap. Let me put this in. Make sure it's correct. Well, not to there though. I think we just need to get these wires up out of the way for now. I think they'll go behind there. That looks pretty good. Now the rotor. So I don't have the tool to take this off. It, it threads in here and then there's a screw that goes in and presses up against the rod here, the shaft, and that's how you get it off. So what I did, um, I'll show you here. Let me get this started. Okay, what I did was I took the nut off and then I threaded it back on about halfway so that the nut was out further than this. I took this piece of metal, ran a screw in here, did it this way, ran a screw in here and I ran a screw in here into these two holes and tightened it up tight and then I took a hammer and smacked the center of this with the tension on this and that popped popped the rotor out. So let's get this in and get this tight. And when I mean tight, I mean impact tight. Now what we want to do We want to get the reluctor part here. We want to pull this blue wire through more. wires up out of the way. Put a little bit of Loctite on these screws. A little bit too much. So I'll just share it with this screw. Okay, before I tighten, tighten everything, we want to measure this gap. I think we want a gap of 15 thousandths. Which feels pretty good right there. Um, magnetism giving it some extra drag I think but definitely can slide in there so yeah I think we're good there okay next thing is the little fan I'll put a little Loctite on those screws too even though I don't think they had any we'll just put a little bit a little bit and I say that and I always squeeze the tube too much spread it between them all. I 
kind of surprised they don't use like lock washers on anything. But you know, this thing was probably 800, 900 brand new maybe. I think these things are like seven foot pounds or so. Okay. I just want to double check our gap one more time. Yeah, I think we're good. I got all these wires pulled up. We will plug those in. Time to put this side cover back on. This bracket and the ground wire. Loosen this one to get it off, which holds your fender on. <clears throat> Got one down on the bottom here. On the top, gonna run our wire back here. I'm gonna have to zip tie it securely. Let's see what I can do here. All right, now, we have a blue and white and a red and black. So red and black goes to red and black, but blue and white goes to red and white. All right, let me get some zip ties and I'll take care of that. Okay, now we get to plug a regulator back in, or the new regulator in. Remember the old regulator. If you can see it, there's a black spot on there where it looks like it might have burnt or melted. So I got a new one, I'll put that one on. Okay, and that just mounts under the front end here. Just one plug and one bolt holds it in, just make sure, you know, wires aren't being stretched or anything like that. 
Okay, everything is connected. The big test will be, do I get any arcing when I go to connect the battery? Do not. That's a good sign, because that's what was happening before. All right, we'll hook this up and we'll start up and see if it's charging. Okay, we're at 12.4. Let's turn the key on. Pull that. getting on these scooters if you rev them up on the side stand that clutch will <laughs> kick in and they'll take off so yeah it looks good that's the carburetor stepping itself down but yeah i think we're okay turn it off and it drops back down all right, so scooter number two, I gotta put the nose back on, and this one should be done. And now I can get back to working on motorcycles. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this little scooter thing. There may be one more. Um, that should be an easy one, he said, which is just replacing the uh, CVT belt, um, but yeah. I hope you liked it. We'll get back to motorcycles. Please like, share, subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching.